Marta, can you talk us through what you're painting here? So I'm painting, I'm painting Saint Bede, who's the patron saint of the Bede College in, in Rome, where this, this crucifix is going. And I've depicted him reading from the Gospels, because the, the crucifix is actually going in, into the library to a place of study. And the idea is that Christ is blessing, blessing his study. What about the colours that you've chosen here? Did they emerge along the way, or did you have a set plan at the beginning, or a bit of both? Yeah, well, the colours are interesting because tempera has a much higher key than, than the oil paintings we might be familiar with, so egg tempera just being natural pigment mixed with egg yolk. So to model the form, instead of using shadows, you're using colour, so green is a colour that recedes, and red is a colour which comes forward. And that creates a sort of brighter image, uh, and an image which is legible from from a greater distance. And what role does the gesso play there? Well, the gesso is just, it's sort of, it's the ground, isn't it? And, it, and it's a lovely, bright surface that provides the kind of underlying luminosity to the image. So the ideal is that the paint layers are sufficiently thin that that luminosity of the gesso comes through. So it's an, almost like an image which is, which is glowing. And that's a sort of symbol of, of the radiance of grace which shines from the saints and from the whole world created and redeemed in Christ. And when you're doing the painting, do you start and continue to work in a certain areas of it, or do you work on the whole? Or again, well, I, just, I, just, uh, I just sort of jump in there, and sometimes, sometimes things uh, go to plan, sometimes they don't, so if things are tricky, I mean, I hate drawing hair, so that's all that for the last minute. So it's a sort of uh, little skirmishes into the painting, and gradually at the end, you get to a point where you can start balancing things out, and that's when the magic really happens: adding the adding the lettering, adding adding lines, balancing colours, adding washes here and there. So it's not really until the very end that one can start making sure that the whole, all the different elements of the image work together. So, Jim, it's, it, you've been building up. It seems like to, to to making the face over over the three months, and now you're there. And how does that feel, having having worked in the mosaic? From Epiphany. Yeah, great to be working on the on the head and the, and the face now. Building up to it, yes, but we also started working out the scale of the individual tesserae through a study of the face and then the eyes themselves. So in a way, it's a return to where we started, and I've been looking forward to it to a long time. Having done the face, then I'll return to other parts of the mosaic to make adjustments so that the face is properly as it should be, the focus of the eye when the person before the icon comes into the visual presence here, the visual representation of St. Dominic. Are there other things about being a, a painter uh, that have informed making mosaic, or are there things, having done some mosaic, which will inform your painting? Painting has emerged along the way, really, the, the experience of having painted before. When I first started the mosaic, I was taken aback by the requirement to produce the finished image with the glass right from the beginning, a bit like working with a tapestry. It's, it's hard to go back, it's possible. Um, at some point at the end of putting the glass into here, lime plaster, we take out all the glass from that lime plaster by placing a cloth as here, glued with animal skin glue onto the glass. We take away the glass, we clean up the back of the cloth and then we place all the tesserae into a permanent glue base 